I found it on Rayma Radio. This week's sermon is shared by Pastor Rudy Chu on 29th of January 2017 at Kingdom City, entitled Constantly Soaking. You know, sometimes we just want to get soaked in the presence of God. But what about when you are all by yourself? What about when you're alone in the room? You see, it's in the inner room where you encounter His love for you where your love is ignited and where your roots of love for God is born. It happens all in the inner place. It happens all in the secret place. I love David. I love David when he was being anointed as king at a young age. But the next thing what David did was he didn't live in the palace straight away. He didn't live with the luxurious life and commanding officers around him. He went back to his secret place, the green pasture. He went back to shepherding the sheep because that was his secret place. That was the place where he spent most of his time with God. That's where he gets all his books, the songs in the book of Psalms, you know. It was all from that secret place with God. Get yourself soaked in the presence of God right now as I speak to you. You you begin to ask God, Lord, soak me in your presence right now, oh God. Soak me in your presence. And as you you begin to just uh, develop the secret place lifestyle, the next process which is going to take you to, to be constantly soaked in God's presence is you begin to go beyond what you feel. You see, Jesus' foundation must be our foundation. I'm reading from this Jesus in in, in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 and 25, where Jesus just finished his sermon on the mount, and he came down and he he gave this statement, Therefore, whoever hears this saying of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. You remember that story? You remember that, that, that paragraph where God talks about building your house on the rock and on the sand? I've seen so many, and one of my biggest concerns with lots of Christians around is that many people, their lives are, are, are totally being built on the shifting sense of our feelings. Rather than on the rock of doing the sayings of Jesus. That is why we had so much of uh, inconsistency in our life. Because most of the time, in fact, including me, we make rash decisions. Uh, and we base our decision based on our feelings. If you base your f- decisions on your feelings, let me tell you. Uh, feelings changes every now and then. So today you feel great, praise the Lord. Tomorrow you feel lousy, don't praise the Lord. <laughs> you know, our feelings changes every now and then. And it's so dangerous to base our life on our feelings. To to decide our lives based on what we feel. Today you say, I love you to your spouse 10 years down the road. What happened? What happened? Because we base our lives a lot on the shifting sense of our feelings. In, in society, our life is guided by what we feel right. And I heard people always say, oh, that just doesn't feel like God. The truth and the word of God, the truth is not rooted in our feelings or opinions, church, but in the scripture. In the scripture. It has to go beyond our feelings and based on the solid word of God. Because in John chapter 1, verse 1 says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So this is the solid rock. This is the word of God. And if you base your life on the word of God, beyond your feelings of how you feel right now, I am telling you, you are making the best and the right decision of your life. Because it will never crumble down as you base your life on the word of God. His word stands still. 
When we talk about the truth, it's not rooted. The scripture says in John chapter 8, verse 32, says, Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And probably right now, you have been struggling with sin. You've been struggling with bondage. And you've been praying and asking God, Lord, why am I not getting my breakthrough? God, why am I not set free, oh God? You can be set free. And whatever the struggle is, if you start believing and relying on the Word of God, because only the Word of God can set you free. And speaking of that, I'm not here to diminish the value of your, your emotions. I am for emotions. I'm full of emotions. She can tell you, I'm a very emotional guy. You scold me, I'll cry. You see, I value emotions and connect to God emotionally, along with other dimensions of my being. I value that. But I believe when the Lord speaks to me, there is an emotional component to that experience. However, every aspect of my experience needs to be tested and understood through the Word of God. Through the Word of God. That is how we grow. That is how we constantly getting soaked in the presence of God. When you begin to check every experience in your life is tested by the Word of God. If the experience you've gone through is not in alignment with the Word of God, then you need to take that and deal with it. Many bad experiences you've gone through, hurt, you know what, discouragement, frustration you've gone through, that's not in alignment with the Word of God. You need to chuck it out in the bin. Don't carry it with you. Some of you have been carrying for far too long, and you don't realize it's not aligning with the Word of God. So anything that's not aligning with the Word of God does not bring life. You want life? Get it from the Word of God. Oh, You know, the Bible has to come before our feelings or imaginations. It has to come first, before what we feel or what we very imagine. People reason, you know what, I don't just don't think Jesus will make me feel uncomfortable. This must not be of God. It's not comfortable, not from God. Let me tell you a story. Your comfort level should not be the thing that determines whether you can believe something is of God or not. It is what the Word of God says. Even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death in the book of Psalms 23, it it goes to show that you will go through the valley of shadow of death. You will feel uncomfortable. But nevertheless, God says, I will be with you. I will be with you. So you will go through some seasons of really uncomfortable, but let me encourage you, when you begin, you can be soaked in the presence of God in the seasons of uncomfortable. You can. It's easy to be soaked when you're having good time, but it's really hard to be soaked when you're having a difficult time. That's why we have to go beyond your feelings. right? Scripture doesn't shut down or ban our temperaments uh, it shows us how they can express in healthy ways. You don't have to believe anything I say right now, but if you want to grow in God, let me encourage you this. You do, you do need to know what the Bible says about God's design and order for your life. That's the only way. This is the only way that's going to tell you your, how you were designed and what you were made for. Build your thoughts on what the scripture says and on nothing else. Being in a secret place right now, developing a secret place lifestyle. When you're in a secret place lifestyle right now, this is the secret place lifestyle. Now you're in a secret place lifestyle. Now you got to go beyond your feelings. Once you've gone beyond what your feelings feels and tells you, the next thing is you got to start learning to value what God values. You know, one of the things is how do you value a thing? How do you value a thing? Let me just help you here a little bit. People say, um, you know, how, how, how do you value a ring? For example, how do you value this ring? How do you value it? You see, the highest price people are willing to pay for it is going to determine how much this value you see, the highest bidder will tell you what it's worth. 
you have to start looking at how God values you. Because in Romans chapter 8, verse 37 and 38, it's on the screen, says, No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, can you see right now, this is only one part of the scriptures as God is telling you, nothing will be able to separate you from the love of God. You know, you read in uh, Romans chapter uh, 5 verse 8, it says, But God demonstrated His love towards us, in that while we were still seen us, Christ died for us. Can you see now how God well is you and me? More than anything else, he's willing to lay down his life so that you and me here today could value what God has already given you. Every day you decide, say, God, I want to go into that secret place. God begins to soak you in his presence. Every day when you begin to decide, God, I want to go beyond my feelings, say, God, and just trust in your word. God begins to soak you with his presence. Each time when you begin to value yourself and the people around you the way how God values them God begins to soak you in His presence why don't we just close our eyes and bow our heads when right now? you know when I talk about values tonight sitting in this place God values you more than what you can ever imagine or dream of His value towards you is priceless and if you're sitting here right now, you don't feel so much. You don't feel love. You don't feel that God values you. Can I encourage you? Go beyond that feeling. Go beyond that feeling. Begin to see how God sees you. Begin to rely on the Word of God. Rely on the Scripture. Begin to base your value and your self-esteem and your foundation on the rock. On the spoken Word of God. Because sitting in this place, there are some of you here who needs a breakthrough. We need to get out from that bondage of always allowing our feelings to control us. And we need to step into that secret place and begin to allow the Word of God to determine what you were called for. Or maybe you are sitting here, you have not known Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And you are feeling down and lousy. And your life means no purpose to you. Many times you thought about taking your own life. But tonight, God is here to tell you, He loves you. He values you. You are precious in His sight. He died on the cross for you so that you and Him could have a communion. So that you and Him could have relationship. So that you and Him could have that secret place moment. Because He is so much more for you. Don't shortchange yourself by trusting on your feelings. Allow God's Word to mold you, shape you. Or you have been away from God. You need to make it right before God. That you have realized so much about your experience, about what I've gone through, or what I've done. But God says, if you come to me, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, you will be saved. You have just heard a sermon from Pastor Rudy Chu. For more sermons shared in Kingdom City, log on to KingdomCity.com. Hello everyone, do you have a heart to reach the Orang Asli of Malaysia? Maybe you'd like to minister to them and be a blessing to their lives. Well, if you'd like to, visit us at www.1vm.net. That's One Voice Ministries. MBS is organizing a camp entitled Called by the Word. And the purpose of the camp is to help you answer God's call on your life. Whether pastoral or secular, it is time to unravel your destiny. Come, 
Learn to hear from God's word and the inspired voice of the Holy Spirit concerning your future. For further information, please contact Pastor Kit Yen, 016 607 2200. 016 607 2200. Hi, I'm V from Jakarta Gekai Church. My mom is a Christian and she fasts at any season whenever she feels the need to fast and pray. She feels better, happy and closer to God when she does that. Hi, I'm B, the husband and speaking for both of us. Like our mom, we fast when there's need. But this would be a wonderful occasion to fast. In my school, the teachers start fast for the students mainly because of the exam. And so we would like to encourage everyone uh, to fast and pray during this season of Lent. Blessed land to everyone. Hi guys, I'm Cheryl Mohan from X Church. I think that fasting and prayer is a powerful spiritual tool that we have because it's a purposeful action that we can do, choosing to separate ourselves from our regular pattern or from worldly things so that we can use that time to build up our inner man and have a more intimate relationship with God. It's really like how couples will take time off from work, etc., to go on a short getaway together. That time away allows them to spend meaningful time with each other so that they can invest and build a strong relationship together. I pray that as we enter a season of fasting and prayer, let's do it with that intention in mind. Invest your time to pray more, read the Bible more, and I believe that you will encounter breakthroughs in your life. Amen. Hi everyone, my name is Jason from Tapestry and I worship in Pataling Jaya Gospel Hall. I will be reading from Psalm 33, verse 20 to 22. Uh, it's a verse that's special to me because it was a passage that was shared uh, to me uh, during my dad's uh, passing. So here goes. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart rejoices in Him because we trust in His holy name. Let your loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us according as we have hoped in you. Hi, my name is Tony from a Presbyterian church, Donville, Australia. Today I have a word of God and a prayer for all of you. Lord God, with just one touch from your almighty creative hand, Lord, you have healed the sick and raised the dead. How amazing, Lord, is your Lordship over all how powerful your redeeming love, Lord. How great was your sacrifice to go before us and bring forgiveness and hope for all those that need it. It's only by your stripes I ask, Lord, for healing and restoration, Lord. May life and wellness grow in fullness until it overflow. And then you will know, Lord, this is all done by you for the healing you have given. And in your great name, Lord, I pray. In Jesus' name, Amen. I'm Wong Hong Meng. My wife and I worship at Damansara Utama Methodist Church, and I would like to share a short testimony with you that changed my life completely. The Lord came into my life in 1981. For more than seven years, I thought I was a good Christian. I was very regular in attending church services even when abroad, some prayer meetings and other church organized events. I bought everything the church had to sell, ties, umbrellas, Christmas cards, sunshades, etc. I also brought friends to evangelistic meetings both in the church and at FGB meetings. I had excellent relationship with my pastors and deacons. I was a good Christian by most people's reckoning. But I was not really involved in any ministry. When invited to serve in the men's fellowship, I declined. I refused to join the FGB as a member. I just kept pushing away invitations to be involved. Even when I was involved, it was for my own satisfaction and enjoyment, like singing in the Christmas tree. I blame it on two fears. The fear of lack of time. 
If I commit any time to church ministry or take on some ministry responsibilities, then the time would have for my work and therefore my career development or my family or for myself must suffer. There is only 24 hours in a day. And I was already spending 12, 13 hours a day at my work. The second fear was that I was not spiritually mature enough to be involved. I could not quote scripture offhand, and I thought my grasp of theology was inadequate. Then, on 4th of September 1988, the Lord flipped me upside down and gave me a big kick in the behind. I was on a hike with my colleagues in the Pangsun Ululangan area. It took us an hour and a half to reach the waterfall. Five of us went into the water and we were enjoying a good head and shoulder massage. Suddenly, I saw something black and round right in front of my eyes. Then I felt a sharp prick on the left side of my neck. I knew a snake had bitten me. We made our way to the shallower waters and they found two holes on my neck, one bigger and deeper than the other, and a lot of blood was flowing out. My colleagues could not do anything. They could not make a deeper cut in my neck to let the blood and poison flow out faster. And they could not tie a tourniquet to stop the blood from circulating. The swelling started immediately. We knew that the snake was poisonous. And the guard positioned at the waterfall as it was a water catchment area told us that the snake was a cobra. Took me more than three hours to come down from the hill and got to hospital Kuala Lumpur. After a week, the bike had turned necrotic. It became a heart lump on the left side of my neck. I was transferred to Pantai for surgery. The operation took three hours. The dead tissue was removed and I had to remain in Pantai for another week. The strange thing was that despite the wound, the swelling around my neck and chest and the surgery, I had no fear, no fever. My vital life signs were all normal. Quite unexpectedly, it was two weeks of rest for me. Other than the occasional visitor, I was largely undisturbed. I reflected on my Christian life. For more than seven years, I had enjoyed the Lord's blessings. My family and I had experienced His deliverance, His healing, His provisions, but I was not willing to give back. I was leading a good Christian life, but a self-serving one. I knew I must not continue like that. I surrendered myself to my pastor and started serving in the church, took up leadership positions in the men's ministry, started attending cell meetings, went on mission trips both locally and as far as Africa. I joined SGB as a member and was appointed to various leadership positions. From being almost completely uninvolved, I was very involved. Not only in the church, but also in FGB. A 180 degree turnaround. Then what about my two fears? I discovered that somehow there was enough time. My work and my career did not suffer. My relationships with my wife and children did not suffer. And my health and personal well-being did not suffer. How? I don't know. Maybe the managers I worked with did not give me too much problems. Maybe the board papers I had to write did not have to be redrafted multiple times. There was enough time. God is the creator of time. Time is in His hand. He will make time for us if we are willing. Then what about the fear of not being ready or adequate to serve? Then I realized that as I allowed the Lord to use me, He will equip me, slowly but surely. As I served, my confidence grew. My self-imposed sense of inadequacy began to evaporate, and He endowed me with the ability to do the work He had assigned to me. The cobra bite was a turning point in my Christian walk. The Christian life is exciting and most satisfying as we walk with Him as He leads us. I urge every one of you not to wait for the cobra to bite before you move out of your comfortable chair in the church and start getting involved in the kingdom work that He has planned for each one of us. Thank you. Peace.
that runs so deep Fixed within my soul You will not let go I have this hope That cannot fail It will never waver It will never end You are everlasting You won't change You will stand forever Age to age God, you are unending You declared beginning So I'll make my
episode features music from Worship Central. Today's episode is recorded and edited by Veronica Ng. We would love to hear from you, especially if you have a testimony to share. Write to us at hello at remarad.io. Stream or download new episodes weekly on Friday or Saturday evening. If you have not listened to Susanna Liu and Jonathan Cole on Pastor Raymond, do catch their interview in the last segment. You're listening to Rima Radio, 